I'm the French Canadian Sensation from the official GunnaGeek.com podcast, a proud member of the Gunna Geek Network, just like the one you're listening to now. The opinions expressed are those of each individual. Check out all other geeky podcasts at GunnaGeekNetwork.com and get ready, because geekiness begins in three, two, one. You are listening to the Starling Tribune, a podcast dedicated to the Arrow TV show. This guy gets more airtime than the Kardashians, right? This podcast is not produced or maintained by the CW, Warner Brothers Television, CTV, or DC Comics. All characters, situations, and stories are the properties of Time Warner. I am the Oracle, and this is your Tribune. Welcome back to the Starling Tribune. I am Stargate Pioneer, my friends. They call me SP and your reporters for this 23rd and final episode of season four of the Starling Tribune are Chris. This is your mother. Oh, goody. And Neil. Why isn't this a simple matter of flicking off a switch? Is that like flicking off a booger? And Michelle. Living in Star City requires a special kind of tenacity. Mm, special type of person, one that will li- that uh, rides the short bus, perhaps. This show is recorded on Thursday, May 26th, 2016, live on Geeks.Live. We're just a few gonna geekers that discuss the TV show Arrow. Just a little reminder that I'm more of a sci-fi guy, but I'm catching up to the comic lore more and more thanks to folks like Chris. Rebirth is awesome. Read it. And Neil, did did we talk about rebirth yet? Are we going to talk about rebirth? Let's let's talk about rebirth. Can we talk about grown men crying when they read comics? Because I almost did. (laughs) And Michelle, hail Hydra! Oh, Oh. Oh. you would have to cross the streets (laughs) on that one. Oh. During this podcast, we'll be talking about what happened on the season four finale episode of the CW television show Arrow, as well as news articles and not and announcements that have dropped in the past week and that could impact future episodes. It will contain spoilers for the current episode, so consider yourself warned. Just a little reminder that all of our past shows can be found at gunnageek.com. All right, Neil, I know you've been waiting for this one. You got on a connection special from your hotel to do this. So go ahead and break this episode down for us. Thanks, SP. Well, you called it. This is the season four finale schism. Uh, Episode 23, air date of Wednesday, May 25th, 2016. Director is John Baring. 41 titles under his belt, dating back to 1995, including 12 of apps. Uh, Arrow, Five of Grimm, Limitless, Gotham, Flash, The 100, The Tomorrow People, The Vampire Diaries, Hellcats, Numbers, 4400, One Tree Hill, Charmed, and the list goes on. The writers, again, it's a season finale. You know they're bringing out the big guns. We've got Greg Berlanti, Wendy Miracle, and Mark Guggenheim. It doesn't get better than this. It doesn't supposedly we'll be talking about that in a little bit uh, let's first let's spoilers. take let's take the title well i mean we're into it there's no more spoilers i mean that's we've all watched the episode this is where it's at wait wait i was supposed to watch the episode oh hell i'll be back <laughs> so question for you chris how many episodes of arrow have you not watched and podcasted on because i know the number of what is on the the walking dead uh zero Awesome. So you did watch today's and episode. I have acknowledged. I see. <laughs> uh, have to get that caveat in. And talking about your acknowledgement, let's talk about the episode title, Schism. So I didn't know what the heck it meant. So I went to dictionary.com and I was like, okay, what is schism? According to schism, the number one definition is division or disunion, especially into mutual opposed parties. So that confused me even more. I don't know what this episode is about. Is Oliver conflicted? Is the city conflicted? Is the world conflicted because all their nukes went up? I mean, come on. What? Help me out here, guys. What is schism? Neil, help Every, me out here. Well, Chris, hey, you were jumping in there. Yeah, go ahead, Chris. Everyone's conflicted is all I was going to say. 
Yeah, and I think Felicity calls it out. She's like, Ollie, you're of two minds. You're you're fill, filled with the hope, but you're also filled with, you know, the fear, the dread, the darkness. There's the light and the dark. If if you look at your definition, there is disunion within Ollie's soul, perhaps, the light and dark sides. Um, I think it's more a reference to the schism within the team. The team is fractured. I wouldn't say they're mutually opposed, but it's fr maybe fractured would have been a, a better title for this episode. Uh, writers, you can use that if you want. <laughs> I don't know if they're fractured. I mean, they have individual things that they're working on that they need to go off and work on themselves. They're not fractured from Team Arrow. I don't know, Michelle. What do you think? I think with all that's happened this season, they've become reflective. They've become um, questioning, you know, Laurel's dead and everything. And they're just like, what is my real purpose? And I, I, this is kind of like they're taking the summer off to find themselves backpacking in Europe or whatever. Sure. What's left of it after the nukes rain down on it. What are you talking about? They're all no, in space forever. Nothing is ever going to make those come back. There's no Nothing more ever re-enters. There's no more GPS from that. That's for sure. With all that radiation in orbit, it's fried those satellites. <sighs> hey, Supergirl's right going to fix that when she shows up somehow. Oh, say goodbye to Dish TV. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Heck, even cable TV, because it comes down to your local area in a big dish. They don't distribute that over the... Well, they might through Fios or something. I don't know. But what they used to do is distribute it locally to a big dish, and then that local hub would farm it out to everybody. So I don't know if we, we, we even be able to watch season five of Arrow. Very, very conflicting. Very conflicting. Just go to Amazon.com, write in <laughs> Arrow, and buy the season five pass right now, and it'll magically show up on your TVs when it's ready. Or stream it from the CW. So you're good. You're, you're good. You don't have to worry. Yeah, you're I good. see. No Problem satellites. Solved. Yeah. All right. I need to talk a little bit about rocket science. So we can either do it now or later. So Is there a drinking game for Starling Tribune? Oh. Uh, there's a drinking game for the Get a Geek Network. Okay. So the yeah, rocket geek, scientist geek is going to talk a, a little bit about the nuclear weapon that was launched from Colorado, which is actually up in Wyoming, but we'll just call it Colorado because that's where Effie Warren is, is in Wyoming. So anyway, the rocket gets launched up and it, apparently it's powered the entire way up to Star City and it comes down in the city in one complete rocket. It hasn't staged at all. The RVs haven't separated. The rocket is still going like an air-to-air -air missile, all one piece intact. And it comes down, and Curtis, with a wavering hand, is able to point some sort of laser detector towards the missile, not waver at all. And Felicity is able to hack the missile, which is probably going... I don't know, let's say Mach 25, let's just put that number out there. And they're able to turn the missile at the last moment, and it goes off and explodes, I don't know where, somewhere. So that's a second nuclear bomb that's gone off, right? And radiation is falling out on somebody. Monument City is probably just getting jacked up right now. <laughs> this is What's... how we get mutants. Do you want to get mutants? <laughs> so nice that's, pull. that's one thing. The second thing is then she gives the thing to the way to do it to Lila and Argus and say, oh, go find as many of these as you can and distribute it. And in true Independence Day fashion, let's use the telegraph or something and tell everybody how to bring these missiles down. But there's not enough to bring down the world. So finally, let's hack them. Let's throw them up to space and let's explode them in space. I would not want to be living on the International Space Station right now. So there are some issues. Why didn't the U.S. government come in and to, I mean, they know what's going on. Lila is informing the president. Why doesn't the military come in to okay. Star City and take over? This, this is this is this is something I, I'm going to. This is the one thing that this the last three episodes I can happen within like, well, like two hours of each other. So I can sort of forgive the president not sitting in the, the military might be on its way or maybe something else. Um, so that part of it doesn't bother me. 
everything else, though. Well, they said their nukes into space. They didn't say that they all exploded. I mean, maybe they're keep going or they went into Jupiter. Maybe that's what happened. Uh, <laughs> unlimited fuel. Sure. Absolutely. No. I'll, I, you know, we've gone this far. Why not? Let's let's nuke Jupiter. Why Guys, not? You wanna, let's keep building up the DC universe. You know who fixed the problem in space? Not Supergirl, because she doesn't do well in space, evidently, in the Berlanti verse. The Green Lantern Corps. The Lanterns took care of it. Introduce Hal Jordan next season. Be like, what the hell did you guys do? I had to come clean up your mess. Now, wait a minute. This D Diggle's leaving town in a uniform, you know? So maybe when he goes away, he can become... There you go. Did, Green Lantern. Did he, did he re enlist? That's what that I yes. to get from it. I'm impressed so. he could still fit into it personally. I mean, he's been out of the army for a while. And once you've been out, you know, your body starts to change, even though he's been working out. I, that thing had to be tailored. I'm sure his upper body has been bulked up by just trying to keep up with Stephen Amell uh, or Oliver Queen, whatever, yeah, since well, he got he, out. So he has gotten bigger. Like he is a big man from. From season one, those arms, they feel like they're twice the size when you see them on the screen. Probably not twice the size, but yeah, no. So there was some tailor. Maybe he's always had it in the back of the mind. He goes in once a season, gets the tailor to, you know, just in case I need this bad boy, let's let's work on it. I'm sure he re-enlisted and it'll be interesting to see where he goes. One of my prognostications is that he's headed to Russia and will be flip-flopping flashbacks with Oliver next year. Yeah. Or or maybe they'll make him the Argus liaison. Huh? Huh? His, well, I mean, his so, wife runs Argus. You let's be honest now. If you're running Ar if Argus still exists in season five, it's a miracle because of the sheer incompetence we've seen from them in the past two seasons, basically. <laughs> that is an organization that should be shuttered and recreated into something else. Oh, you lost all you lost the access to all the nuclear weapons in the world? No big deal. We'll keep you on, director. Well, let's be honest. And let's send all my guys in to power up Damien just a little bit more. I mean, what? Okay, so that scene though. Despite that being dumb, the director was super smart. We've already seen Damien's powers. We've seen him basically just wreck people. I think it was much more powerful to hear just the audio of that and see the reactions in the arrow cave of everyone be like, oh my God, they're getting massacred, especially Lila's. That okay. was super well done by the director, I thought. So how many people were in the team? A dozen, maybe two dozen, whatever. Yeah. Damien's already powered by tens of thousands. What's another 24 going to do to his power? Maybe quotient? it's an exponential growth. All right. Ooh, science. <laughs> so, really? You're going to science that magic? Actually, it should be math, but whatever. We'll go with the Marvel excuse that magic is just science we don't understand yet. I just slow clap there, Chris. Way to pull that one off. I just spun it back. All right. Yeah, give me time here. I. I talk out my ass and I have to spin it back sometimes. <laughs> my mouth. I mean, slower than my mouth. Okay, let's downshift a little bit. It, it was a top. It was just a top up SP. You know, he he, he had tens of thousands, but no more didn't hurt. It's like the cherry on top. It's the after it's dinner cream. end. All right. Oh yes. Okay. okay, let's downshift a little bit. Let's talk about more hand to hand combat fights. First, we got the loft. How'd you guys like that, Michelle? Um, it, I liked how uh, when Damon was, when Damon, when Dark, let's just call him Dark, when Dark was in there and he stopped the arrow and he stopped the explosion, I thought that was cool. That was indeed cool, especially because he didn't just stop the explosion. He let it expand just a little bit and then it dissipated, just poof. It was awesome. And the arrow really didn't explode either. What I really like is the fact that we get hordes of ghosts everywhere this episode. It's like, this is the last time we're going to see them. Let's use all of our extras. Let's just throw all of our troops at arrow. Um, now it's, you know, was it a good fight? I think it was pretty interesting. I, it could have been a bit more coordinated, but I think it was a good fight all around. I often, when 
you're invading into a room, bad guys, good guys, whatever. And it's a controlled access point. I often think, how are these guys not dying? Because it's very easy to aim, shoot and kill or maim or, or disable the person that's coming through the door because it's a limited place to aim at. And they did a really good job between Diggle and Oliver of taking out as many as they could before they started to overwhelm it. So I thought that from a tactical standpoint was well done. I thought that they needed to get Curtis a little bit out of the picture, at least for half the episode or whatever. And they did that right away and they had to distract everybody so they could take the laptop and get the launch codes to do what we were just talking about. And take the GPS tracker out so it can blink ominously and be huge. It was a big GPS tracker for a laptop. For a laptop. I mean, right. That laptop's low jacked. I'm like, that's supposed to be pretty tiny, I thought. Yeah. <laughs> and when did when did the lair get a med bay? Has that always been there? Because they took yeah, they had Thea in it when she was sick earlier on this year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, like and we, we've them. had we've had Ollie on that slab before. I, yeah, so I I think it's I think it's been used actually quite a bit. And then okay. Oliver's magic protects him. Doesn't protect. I, what was going on with that? Is the tattoo working or not? Now well, remember, Dame Dark is super powered, so it overrides the tattoo. So Oliver had that line that Damien's so powerful at this point that. Felicity's hope isn't enough for him to be able to overcome with the tattoo. So that's why the magic works at the end when he and excuse me, when the arrow and Oliver Queen have both inspired Star City, it's able to allow the magic of the tattoo or whatever it is that Oliver learned in the casino to um to nullify, excuse me, Damien Dark's magic. Is that what it was? Was it a nullification? Because I wasn't sure why Damien suddenly just, lost his magic. Or it just didn't work on Oliver anymore, and he just defaulted to fists. I mean, I imagine it would still work on the people that didn't have magic tattoos. Because you can easily distract Oliver by starting to kill people around them and make Oliver try to save him or something. You know, have a building fall down on him. So I don't know. But the lady <laughs> said... That it the, the light counteracts the dark, so I guess everybody's hope was enough. I guess remember, magic is just science we don't yet understand. Everyone, that that's the way I I kind of saw it, Michelle as well. That finally, when hope was restored, hope from Oliver Queen and and the Green Arrow, that finally there was enough, and uh, yeah. That was a plausible explanation. I was willing to go for it. So wait a minute. Who's Hope? When did Hope become a character on the show? I know you could play a drinking game with how many times Hope was said in this episode. This is true. You could probably play a drinking game of how much Laurel's name was said during the episode. Yay, I love Laurel. <laughs> she's not <laughs> gone. <laughs> she might be at the grave, but she's not gone from the show. Yay. Wasn't that a little bit odd? Oliver was talking to her and I love you. And then Felicity was standing right there. Doesn't necessarily mean romantic love. Still kind of weird. I'm with SP on this one. <laughs> it's, it's a little weird. And then she okay. immediately interrupted too. She's like, doing okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I'm here by the way. <laughs> Look at me. So let's go to the fight on the island. So it was it was one fight, but it was broken up into flashbacks as they normally are. Ryder blows the plane up with his fist. The That's force is strong with this one. It is. Although the dozens of people that died, that was pretty cool. Okay, so somebody tell me how Ryder died. Because I watched the episode twice. I must have blinked both times. I didn't catch it. How did Ryder die? She drains him. And then Oliver, like, I guess when he's at his weakest, throws a knife or something and yeah. mm -hmm. kills him that way. Oh, okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Ryder's gone. Did we see Ryder earlier on this season or was it in a flashback when he Playing was meeting? Flashbacks. Okay. Well, now, and this was a question I had that wasn't he in a flashback with Andy, though? Or was that somebody else? That was the question I had. 
I'm pretty sure it was Andy or Damien. I, I can't remember, but De- you're, that, yeah. you're ringing a bell with Andy with me. Like okay. the flashback that they did with Afghanistan. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it, w- it I thought it was Ryder and Andy. That flash, yeah, that's possible because that flashback in Afghanistan took place either before the flashbacks on the island or right about the same time as when you go back in time. That's right. So those flashbacks were occurring at roughly the same time in the past. So it was past writer just in Afghanistan. Okay. So let's talk about the quiver, the lair, the arrow cave, whatever you want to call it. And the fact that it might as well just be like a big slip and slide to get down in there. Chris, what do you got on that? Um, ghosts are fairly incompetent now. He must have gotten to the bottom of the barrel and what he had left because these guys can't hit a damn thing. <laughs> Oliver was running out in the open. Diggle was running out in the open. They're like stormtroopers from Star Trek. They at, at that close range, they can't hit anything. Did 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 he just cross the streams? I totally did intentionally. <laughs> I was just kind of hoping that somebody flip kicked one of the ghosts in this scene. There was no flip kick this week that I remember, so I'm a little bummed <laughs> out. Uh, I thought we'd get a flip kick during the uh, the the Damien Ollie showdown, but no, uh, you get a Rocky Four there where they literally just keep giving each other right fists, and I'm like, oh, this is cool professional wrestling. <laughs> Yeah, the fights were not the highlight of this episode at all. Well, so there was the big mob scene, though. And see, this is where I think the power of that, too, comes in. Because there's a mob scene going on. And Oliver, not the arrow, Oliver is trying to quell everybody. And in the midst of total nuclear uh, apocalyptic rioting he gets up on top of a cab and the entire street just stops hey look it's all over we need to stop that must have been the tattoo because there's no way any one person is going to stop that without some sort of huge explosion for crowd control he's just that charismatic i mean in all seriousness we didn't see the tattoo glow which is generally when the tattoo's coming into play so i think they're trying to more hint at the fact that this is oliver actually growing into his role of being oliver queen in public that people look up to not being the billionaire playboy quasi philanthropist that sleeps around i don't care who you are you're in the middle of that sort of rioting you're not gonna stop it just by saying hey and getting SP, up on I'm, top of a cat i'm totally on the same page with you there the the speech and the fact that it stops everything just kind of rang of convenience to me is we need to use this to make oliver look better but it doesn't make much sense when you're 30 minutes away from the end of the world People are going to riot. They're not going to stop, regardless of who you are. Agreed, agreed. It, but it it did advance the plot. It it was required for the story to move on. Uh, I'm not going to call it lazy writing, but it was convenient writing to advance the story. This this episode's full of convenient writing. Yeah, and and a T crew just happened to be there to broadcast. You know his his motive is a great speech, but you're right. Like that he was just able to stop the crowd. That yeah. Not only that, but I love how flat screen TVs in the middle of destroyed buildings and rooms and stuff they get knocked down. They're still powered in, and they still can broadcast, and you can still hear them. It they stayed plugged in. They didn't come unplugged. They Apparently just got set not. down gently. Gently, no. Physics not did not come into play. No, there may it's be a magic. few bullet holes in them, yeah, and they they broadcast around the bullet holes because that's how TVs work too. It's well, magic. Damien did it from I a distance. See. He's I need to see this, and he held them up just like he held bullets in crazy weird ex boyfriend hacker dude. He can do it. I I will say that I am not surprised there weren't any bullet holes in it because those stormtroopers from Star Trek couldn't hit anything. Send your hate yeah. mail to at Stargate Pioneer, courtesy of the Gunna Geek Network. That's right. So the end of the world street mob fight, uh, it starts with Oliver getting blasted through the side of the wall and then thrown out in the middle of the street. And then Damien takes it. And then the mob's like, hey, get out of our town, man. Yeah, that, that was like a callback. 
to the same trope they did in Spider-Man 2, Amazing Spider-Man 2, The Dark Knight Rises. I was like, oh, yeah, okay, people are inspired and to stand up to the supervillain. And they literally did from The Dark Knight Rises, the street brawl between the two sides. But the difference is in Dark Knight Rises, it's cops who are trained to fight versus here it's a bunch of civilians that don't get destroyed by trained soldiers, i.e. the ghosts. This, this fight should have been over in like five minutes. It should have been. You know what well, took me and, out? And of the it? ghosts had guns. So yes. instead of <laughs> well, running at the mob, they should have opened fire. We know ghosts can't hit anything, though. We saw them down in the arrow cave. <laughs> They're oh, stormtroopers. I thought of the only plausible answer. It's all the errant League of Assassin agents that didn't have anywhere to go. They decided to settle in Star City, and that's what was them on the street. So that's what enabled to take on the ghosts. It's the only explanation. Oh, I, I will say that there was one point that took me out right before it started, and there were headlights down the street that turned a corner, probably right at the edge of the filming blockade. I saw the turn, the car turn. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Well, that probably would actually happen in real life, but I'm like, yeah, that just took me out a little bit. So, well, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna make a right hand turn if you see a mob up ahead. You're like, man, maybe I don't want to drive down there. Maybe I should loot stores in the next block where there's not an angry mob. Yeah, you have experience in the looting, right? Because you're from Vancouver and you yeah, exactly. And your we team have wins. Lived through, yes, no, when they lose, <laughs> it doesn't matter. You get it doesn't matter. To loot. What you didn't see in the scene was Neil actually taking TVs out of the buildings they were faking being looted so he could build his four <laughs> TVs for better podcasting stuff. He's got each of us on a single screen when he goes back home from all the TVs he took during the looting in the gonna geek nerf podcasting center right <laughs> <Nerf Center. laughs> all right uh, <laughs> so I, just, I, I wish either i wish they would have paid neil to like train to fight so we wouldn't have had so many wide shots with dark and ollie <laughs> for a second <laughs> i'm like i thought you wanted me to do hand in combat but i think you're neil mcdonough right <laughs> Yes. <laughs> That's actually a point that uh Steven Jonger's brought up a few times is they've done more and more this season of seemingly using the stunt doubles than the actors who've been doing their own stunts. You see a lot less of people's faces and deceptive shots, you can't really tell who it is. And I think that's a trend we've had going on that instead of the actors doing some of the stunt work, it's a lot more stunt doubles. And this is just part of that trend with uh Damien Dark. So are the stunt doubles the it is what enables the bodies to be taken away. The stunt doubles when they change out from scene to scene is they just take yeah, the maybe. dead bodies with them. Cause there were no dead bodies anywhere. There weren't in the loft. They weren't down in the quiver. They weren't on the street. No one, dead bodies. One word for you, SP magic. Well, if there was that much great magic, why did they have to break so many windows? You would think that they would be able to repair the windows or be able to go through the I mean, windows without breaking them. Because windows look cool on film when they're destroyed. I guess. There's so much broken glass everywhere in the lair. And even Damien Dark commented on it. It's like, oh, I like that window. You didn't have to break it. It was a nice window. It was a big picture window on the second yeah. floor of the loft. Yes. It, a lot of these th things remind me of Deadpool, where he's like, superhero landing, superhero landing. I'm like, oh, superhero entrance, superhero entrance. They're going to come through a window. The worst <laughs> thing Deadpool did is ruin all these superhero TV shows because you see these tropes <laughs> all the time now. And you're like, oh, damn you, Deadpool. Now it's going to stick out in my head. Yep. So are, are all the ghosts named Bob? Hydra Bob. Probably. Hydra yeah. Bob's ghost. I guess it's Hydra Steve now, though, isn't it? Hey, all I want is to cross the stream a second. If they do a Hydra Steve and Hydra Bob crossover buddy cop book, I'm totally sold on this revelation. <laughs> hey, guys, we got to see Waller again. I miss Waller. Yeah. I thought the same thing. I was like, I missed you. Welcome back, Amanda. And I thought, oh, remember that time with the missile that you were trying to take out Star City? Yeah, we've gone from one cruise missile to every missile on the planet. 
this got out of hand quickly or this escalated quickly man if waller was around that would have that would have uh, been over with really quickly yeah but also at the end we saw all the graves on the island i don't remember seeing the graves stacked up side by side like that before michelle do you remember seeing that no so that was the first of seeing all the We'd graves. seen Papa Queen's grave before, but I don't recall the other graves around it. Right. Aside from Tatiana, who who was the other grave? Was it her brother? Shadow. Shadow. Yeah. Oh, of course, of course. Potentially some of the other folks that were on the boat with the queens is what I was guessing. On the lifeboat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So Star City decides to fight for itself after, what, four years of getting pummeled by supervillains and meta humans and stuff like that they finally decide they're gonna stick up for themselves bravo guys bravo it, it, you gotta, you gotta, yeah you gotta think anybody that's left is a badass at this point though <laughs> maybe that's why the mob was so efficient they're all badasses well yeah right because if you go into legends of tomorrow and you spin the dial forward a few dozen years you see what's left yeah i would agree they they are all definitely badasses left but the city is without any of its chief leadership like they've lost all their top da's including laurel they've lost all their top cops they've uh, lost everybody so oliver queen just comes in and he's going to be mayor queen that's pretty awesome interim mayor queen you know what? This strikes me as a great opportunity for anybody that is upwardly mobile in the civil service or in the police forces. You know what? It might be a short career, but you could move up ladders very quickly if you just move to Star City. Fresh out of the academy, you could probably be captain within a week because there's no one else. Just finished law school. How does assistant DA sound? You might die in six weeks, but you'll get a lot of promotions. The idea is to go there, get promoted, and then leave and have that on your resume when you go to like Coast City or something safe. As long as you leave before the summertime, you're good to go. That's when most of the death happens. The fall, the fall. The, now, okay, that's important. So the election is going to be in August. The season doesn't start until October. So is the election going to happen in the off season? Yes. You think he's going to win? Yes. Yes, because we just established there's no one else left. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There was casting news, what, two, three weeks ago <gasps> of right. that really cool guy who could be a friend or foe and really kind of maybe slick or something. Maybe that person comes along and could run against Oliver for mayor or maybe he just needs a really cool assistant because political intern booty call dude is dead now i figure the new guy is probably just like the vice mayor or something like that the guy that all of us to defer a bunch of stuff to because it's gonna be interesting to see him, him try to be the mayor and have to do nighttime events as mayor queen and not be able to go out there as their hero because he's the only superhero left in town now since everyone's left how fast do you think curtis is going to get himself a costume What's costume? Well, no, yeah, not they, that soon. The, the Playfair jacket. It's not a heck of a costume. Yeah, I think, I think they're trying to go back to the whole solo aspect of things that we remember from early on in yeah. season one for a while because that formula worked. I think this this episode is a lot of reset to try and fix things that got broken in the last season and a half. But, I, but you know, without ref- oh, go ahead, Michelle. But if, okay, if you go back to that, which would be awesome, he was awful at being the arrow and head of uh, Queen Enterprises. So how is he going to be mayor and be the green arrow? Oh, he's not. Felicity. It's going to be an S show. True. But Felicity's going to try to keep him straight. In all seriousness, though, the argument can be that Oliver Queen has matured a good deal and has grown both as a hero and as oliver queen in the four years since he came back from the island he might be better equipped to handle that split role now i don't know i think he will actually step down as mayor uh, i think he knows he can do good as the green arrow there's going to be a need he can't he can't manage both it, you know felicity couldn't manage both he hasn't been able to manage both in the background 
I think he'll have to step down. Maybe we get a, a, a different mayor. I agree with that, but I don't think we'll see that until at a minimum a third of the way through the season where he's got to realize that he can't do this. And then you can go tie back into the old former bat checklist to have him have to pull some kind of Bruce Wayne-ish kind of thing where he makes a fool of himself so that people don't want him to be mayor and he can go back to being the Green Arrow. Ooh, 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 ooh. Are we going to have a mayor queen Christmas party? Probably. Maybe. I've missed the Christmas how, party. How about Mayor Malcolm Merlin? No. No. no Everyone no. knows he's a criminal. Yeah, no. no. No, that's oh. not going to work. He's still wanted by the authorities, basically, right? I mean, he's in hiding the whole time. He's not out in the open, right? Yeah. If, as and, far as I know. Um, if we remember how much hate Ollie's mom got for being involved with the undertaking... Um, and yeah, she threw Malcolm under the bus while on the stands. If Malcolm were to show his head again, there might be some uh, angst directed at him, <laughs> likely not to win an election. We talked about Oliver growing and becoming a different person, still having some challenges. So we'll see. There was the reference back to the flashback of you have to kill in some cases to get justice. So that was interesting. We talked about Diggle. We talked about him needing to leave, thought a little bit odd. We haven't really delved into Thea and her decision to leave yet. So, Michelle, what do you think of that one? Oh, Thea. Um, just when she was really getting interesting and the whole, like, threaten the daughter. It's like, I threatened the little girl and stuff. It's like, well, you were trying to save your brother, but that whole... I don't know. It, it's, I mean, I can understand why she kind of feels like, oh, I'm my father's, you know, I'm turning into my dad and maybe I should leave and stuff. But I don't know. I, it's like, I get, I, I guess what gets me is that that last shot of her, she's just sitting on the couch. You know, like I, I, like I, I kind of thought like if she was leaving, I thought she was going to like, leave and said they have that last shot of her sitting on the couch like maybe i should watch ncis or something i <laughs> i think that was a couch in cortol Matisse, though i don't think that was in starling city that was in the apartment she shared with laurel yeah. i was wondering how the rent was still being paid uh, but yeah, going back going is back the landlord the still alive yeah that could be too going back to thea though i can kind of understand her decision to step back because this season we all know most of it was consumed with her bloodlust because of the lazarus pit and part of her is probably thinking once this is solved i don't have to worry about this bloodlust these things like that and then she kind of slips down that path even if she's cured and threatens a kid to try I mean, granted it's to save oliver it's to help save the city but she's threatening to kill a kid that's what like 10 12 years old that's probably a line that she never imagined herself crossing and she no longer has the excuse of the bloodlust from the Lazarus pit that's skewing her worldview. So I can totally see where she'd be like, oh my God, this is something Malcolm would do. I don't want to be this. I need to figure out the right path and figure out how to come back from this because I don't want to be this person. Yeah, I think we're still going to have her integrated into the show because she is the one character left that kind of fits the demographic that CW normally markets to. I mean, definitely way not us, basically, you know, the younger tween crowd. And so I think she's going to stay on the show as a regular, but I don't know what her path is going to be. It's going to be interesting with the League of Assassins out. I don't know. Maybe Nissa comes and starts to help her. I think cool. you'll you'll see her back in costume eventually because I expect something some something like this to happen where Oliver's in over his head and the only person that's really in Star City that can help him because everyone else is left is Thea and she's got no choice she kind of has to put the red suit back on to go and help him and then realizes that you know I can do this I can do the right thing I don't have to worry about being Malcolm because she goes out saves her brother and doesn't have to kill him. Well, and part of the thing that I, I've been on the lookout for and we've seen it with Legends. If people aren't coming back as series regulars next year, there's usually been press releases or announcements, formal comments made. And we saw that with Captain Cold with Legends, that he's not going to be a series regular. And when people have been upgraded to series regulars, there's usually an announcement. There have been no announcements, which makes me think, while everybody is kind of doing their own thing for the summer, I, I don't know. Are we going to get everybody back next season? 
I don't think they know because of the change in dynamic with Supergirl coming to the CW with Legends of Tomorrow getting a second season. I truly think that they need some time. They need a month or two to go, <gasps> okay, what are, exactly are we going to do this fall? Because the landscape has completely changed and, and a lot of it was not their doing. And right. so the creative team for these shows now has to settle down and say, okay, what exactly are we going to do? And I think, with, especially with the critical look into how Arrow was handled this year, I think they really have to come on strong. Otherwise, they lose a main cornerstone of their programming. Right. So that we all know they've been having issues with Arrow in comparison to other shows. And let me cross over to Central City for a second. Grant Gustin said after the flat alley, he was asked in Twitter and in different interviews, where are you guys going? He goes, Gone, guys, I don't know where anything's going right now because... The actors don't know, so I assume there's going to be some kind of writer's retreat coming up or might be going on as we speak that is figure out the plot for each of these four shows we have and then figure out how they're going to link together. And then my personal conspiracy theory, figure out how we're going to do the crisis on Infinite Earths to bring Supergirl into continuity with everything else. I hope that happens by Christmas. I really do. because That's they, your well, crossover in December, I bet. Yeah, the yeah. network has said there's going to be a crossover in December. Like, it, it, it's not like, oh, maybe. No, they, they've said there is going to be one. I want to back up the truck a, a second here. We were talking about Thea and different ways to help her through it. Let's not forget, Colton Hayes is still out there. And we talked explicitly about him a couple of weeks ago and the fact of why he left the show and the fact of what he might be able to be, come back to and um, reintegrate into the show, which is still a possibility. So he could also come back and sort of help Thea through her issues that she's having right now. I, I would love to have Arsenal back on the show. I think it would add a really interesting dynamic. Or I'd love them to finally do a, a Teen Titans show added to the season. Let's have two superhero shows on one night. Come on, CW, make it happen. A Teen Titans show on the network. We need more tights. You still got the zombie show. You still got the 100. I mean, CW's plate's pretty full right now. Here's the thing. CW only canceled one show. They brought to, they're bringing two new shows on, and they're getting Supergirl. So I don't know how they're going to fit everything in their schedule right now. Well, well, they've already announced the schedule, right? With the, no. their upfronts. Some of it, They've announced yes. the shows, but not necessarily the schedule. Supergirl doesn't have a night yet, for instance. Yeah, Monday no, night. No, yeah, she's Monday. They have Monday. announced that. Yeah. Damn, how did I miss that? My bad. Some some of the series, like the 100, is a shorter season. Like the 100 is a spring um, show and stuff. So not all of their shows are the 20 episodes. So that's how they're doing it. Okay. Gotcha. All right. We've talked about how the top people have left Star City. Captain Lance and Mama Smoke on a road trip. I, I've got mixed feelings on this because I did enjoy Mama Smoke around. Lance had had his issues, but he's the only Lance left on the show. I mean, that's tough. For all the lances to be gone from Star City. Well, he'll be gone for a while. I mean, but if you put yourself in his shoes, he's lost two daughters. He's lost a, he's got an ex-wife. He no longer has his job as a cop, which he used to define himself. He kind of does need to get away and kind of reset and figure out his new path in life. And going wherever he's going with Mama Smoke gives him a chance to kind of figure out where he's going to go from here. I kind of get his motivation too. I hope he goes to Vegas becomes a car dealer or something like that because the dude does need a job he can Hope. go team up with uh with oh what constantine somewhere that'd make a great pair on screen Ho hotel security at, at a casino in vegas yeah. badass hotel security can like mayor darsky and uh, hutch stance can mayor oliver um basically pardon him and bring him back well Based off the rules they have for what mayors can do in this show, I'm sure he can. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor, governor, president, uh, very similar powers to, to forgive people for their crimes. Well, I mean, if there was a mayor in town, at least that mayor would have been able to make some sense about this nuclear damnation that was going on around him. I mean, it's, nobody was in charge. Nobody had the stick except for the who, who was the, who called the city councilman or city manager or something like that i don't know he didn't do anything either 
Well, there was a deputy mayor. Okay, so, oh, God, this show, really. So, <laughs> all right, so the mayor dies. There was a deputy mayor who used to be the DA, right? She did. She's dead. Yeah. Okay, dead as well. So. <laughs> the DA is so, dead. <laughs> wow. Everybody's I, dead. That's how you can get Oliver in there so quickly. All you've got left is a city councilman who's kind of yeah. like, hmm. We need to get a mayor here, and they're all that's left of government, it would appear right now, because everyone else is either dead, has run away, or doesn't want to acknowledge they're yeah. part of the government anymore, so they stay alive. What, what they don't want to disclose is one of the paralegals is now the acting DA as well. So that's <laughs> yeah, there you go. Doesn't even have a law degree, just like Jeff Winger, crossing the streams some more. <laughs> all right, oh, let's, maybe. let's take oh. a look at what wasn't tied up. So... I don't even know if she's got a name, but Damien and Ruve's daughter, where'd Spawn she go? Spawn of the devil. Spawn of the devil, where'd she go? Who's the head of Palmer Tech now? Uh, I have, but we'll talk about this this summer, but I now have a sense of why Malcolm saved Savage, but that has to do with Legends of Tomorrow, so we'll talk about that later this summer. Oh, by the way, we're covering Legends of Tomorrow this summer, so if you haven't seen it yet, go start watching it. It's It's a fun show and it's a great fun summer show too so have fun with that where's oliver's son and the baby mama Ooh, like samantha and then what happened to hive i mean are they all gone now or there's still some left well there were those people on tv screens that dark didn't force kill so i guess there's them left yeah, and sure. I don't think he invited them to the Ark because they were still in the TV screens. They're like, listen, Hive has this big plan, but you're not invited. <laughs> so wait, was that the only Ark? So Hive didn't build other Arks? There was only one. Around... That's why everyone's like, why is Damien going through with this? We destroyed his Ark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hive's not a very well-planned organization. <laughs> <laughs> no. Neither is no. the leak really either, but... You know, well, that's a good point. They haven't dealt with the big hole, the big crater in the middle of town either. Well, they no. kind of had some distractions. Well, I don't know, the 1,500 <laughs> nuclear weapons that are flying through the sky. No, 15,000. 15,000. 15, I was off by an order of magnitude. Oh, jeez. Oh, hey, gosh. Hey, the big thing is, what is Malcolm Merlin doing now? So is he still a member of Hive? Is he still controlling that offshoot of the League of Assassins? Is he, you know, trying to become dad of the year and hanging out in in Thea's apartment now. Like it's like, hey, lead them to safety. Oh, you're a bad guy. Hey, let me put arrows in people for you. Oh, no, you're, you know, evil bionic hand guy. I don't know what they're doing, Malcolm. He's so confusing. That's that's why I made the mayor joke. Um, uh, because, you know, like that's the whole thing. Like like bring the lead back, do something. It's I don't know what the arrow writers were smoking this season. It was just like, they, they just like, what are we doing with everybody? We don't know. He's going to actually be in charge of Argus now. He hasn't joined Argus yet. <laughs> so I, I could see them doing something with him kind of having temporary control of Hive for now, and then you have an episode of Legends of Tomorrow that takes place, say, 15 years down the road where Damien Dark's kid is running what's left of Hive? Maybe maybe Malcolm merges the um, remaining Hive with the remaining League of Assassins, and we get the Hive League of Assassins or something. The Hive of Assassins. I think he boards the TARDIS and buddy buddies up with Jack Harkness. <laughs> yes, I would pay to see that. Make it happen. Oh, Malcolm Merlin and Jack Harkness. Of course, with, as we say that now, there's probably some kind of slash fic being written in the fan fiction world about yeah. that. So, so there, I'll go and find out. What do we call that? We need to come up with a hashtag for that. I, I was thinking it would either be uh, Malcolm Black or Orphan Merlin. <laughs> Lots of different Malcolms running. He could, you know, Bearman could play like five <laughs> different versions of himself. <laughs> oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> What was that with the guy with the head, the people in his head? I uh, can't remember. Ah, some movie about that. Anyway. All right. So what, Neil, let's start you off. What are you looking forward most to in season five? 
I am looking forward to a return to basics. I am looking forward to Ollie and Felicity, just Ollie running around putting arrows in people's shoulders and cameos by cool underused DC characters. That's what I loved in season one and two. It's like, ooh, they brought in this person this week. Ooh, this person this week. Ollie doing parkour. Ollie shooting people with arrows. Um, that's what I missed. A return to what made this show great in the first couple seasons. Michelle? The end of Alicity. Um, I'm sorry. I don't like his <laughs> romance. I, I think that's you know, over with. So what are you I looking hope... forward to in season five? <laughs> well, that's what I'm looking forward to. No more romance with Felicity. Just that's my thing I'm looking forward to. All right. Uh, I want... <sighs> I want consistency next season. I want better integration with flashbacks. And I just want them to have a plan and stick with it. And just because it's like this season just went all over the place. So just have a plan and stick with it. That's what I'm looking forward to. Chris? Uh, much like Neil, I'll return to the basics. Take us back to what worked in season one and two, which is less of the soap opera -y stuff and more of the superhero y and badass fighting stuff. I mean, Elicity was interesting, but at first, the whole will they won't they thing, sort of. But then they went way too far with it. It should have been, okay, we're not actually going to do this. Doesn't make sense. Then they kind of listened to everyone on Tumblr and on Twitter. And that's part of what was so rough for this last season is that. That became the folks of things for so long versus the superhero action. And I don't know. I'm not the target demographic for the holistic side of things. I fully acknowledge that. But I just want to see more of the cool arrow, the things we saw before. I don't want to have to have people go, oh, you still watch that show? Because I've got friends right now. They're like, oh, this season's over. There's enough I know that I quit. And these are folks that are big comic book fans. This is multiple people I've talked to that have been like, yeah, I'm out. I want to bring so them back. Yeah, I do. I think at the beginning of the season, I said Arrow was my favorite show on of the DC variety. Um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was my favorite overall show. And unfortunately, it has slipped. It's still up there. I still like it. It's still the best premise to me, but it needs some work. And in season five, I'm looking forward to more great Hong Kong flashbacks and boob windows. <laughs> I'm with you, Neil. More arrows and shoulders. <laughs> I would like to see Sarah Lance show up again in Arrow. I mean, yeah. that'd be cool. Or Nissa, or the Huntress, or more Vixen next season. And Vixen. hey, listen, let's yeah. let's not forget the highest rated show this season was the Constantine crossover. That cannot be lost on the producers. So I think there's negotiations going on with Matt right now. And trying to see where he would fit because he would fit well into Legends of Tomorrow. So we'll just see if they get him back or not. We talked about it before. I don't know if he likes his Broadway career more. So. Well, there's Legends of Tomorrow could be very interesting because I won't spoil for anyone who hasn't seen Arrow, but the man in the Iron Mask is revealed, and supposedly the man in the Iron Mask might be joining Legends of Tomorrow, is what the current things are that I've seen online. You mean, you mean Flash? The man in the Iron Mask. I'm not. Okay. I don't want to spoil in case people haven't seen Legends. To, or, excuse me. That's what I'm going to say. Flash. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Right. Now, listen. In, in the chat room, Cajun Sean said that he is looking forward to Onomatopoeia. And again, if you remember our news from a couple of weeks ago, Kevin Smith is talking about writing a small arc and bringing his Onomatopoeia character. That would be something that I would be looking forward to as well. Yep. It'll be fun. We'll be here this fall. We'll we'll be doing that, and then in the summer we're going to start out with Legends of Tomorrow. We'll see where that goes from there. Hopefully, we'll get done by the time that the Arrow season five starts later this fall. So, Neil, next week, what exactly are we watching? Well, you guys will be talking about season one, episode one of Legends of Tomorrow, titled Pilot Part One. Uh, the original air date was Thursday, January 21st, 2016. So going back in time uh, through the magic of podcasting. 
And it's going to focus on the year 2166, where Vandal Savage has successfully conquered the entire planet. In an effort to save humanity, time traveler Rip Hunter travels back to 2016 to assemble a group of superheroes and supervillains. And remember, they're not heroes. They're legends. Yes. And they're going to team up to stop Savage's rise to power. This is directed by John Baring and the writers. This will sound familiar to you. Greg Berlanti, Mark Guggenheim, Andrew Kreisberg, and Phil Klemmer. So in this season finale of four Arrow uh, episode, we had Easter eggs, as we always do. Can, can we touch on one thing before we get to the Easter eggs that we didn't really talk about? Yeah, go ahead. So how do you guys feel about the fact that Oliver just straight up killed Damian Dark? liked it i think it was good there was no other way no uh and he'd promised felicity he was going to do that in the back of the uh of the limo we knew it was coming he didn't have a choice see i thought originally i thought he should but he had him beaten he's beaten at that point Th then what happens he comes back and does well, bad things the same thing again. you say with slade he put slade on the island i mean and i did like the fact that damien brought up slade wilson killed your father killed your mother and all you did was lock him on an island and i did like the difference between them it's just it felt almost like a half step back i mean had he killed him because he was truly a threat at that point in time yeah but he's beaten he's a shell of himself he's not doing anything anymore I, that kind of bothered me a little bit i understand why I don't know. He still I'm, had access to the magic. I mean, this was a short window in time. You had to take yeah. the shot. Yeah, I, I agree. And remember, I think the difference between Slade is, yes, you brought your, your Miracuru soldiers to Starling City, but Dark nuked a city with tens of thousands of people. He was going to nuke Star City, and then he decides to nuke the entire planet. That is a clear and present danger. There is only one way, because you know he's going to keep trying to do it. It was the same thing that, uh, that uh, Diggle faced with Andy. They're not going to stop, and you need to eliminate that threat. Yeah, I saw it coming. Um I thought it was interesting that he killed him the same way he killed Laurel. Poetic justice. Yes. And this was a, an episode of what would Laurel do? Die. No, Dude, you got your wish. Let's just let her rest in peace. All right. <laughs> I didn't want her to <laughs> die. I just wanted her to go away. Yes, you did. You said more and more. You wanted her I to go away and die. The train. I just wanted her to go away. <laughs> you were still on it. I mean, it was... Yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hashtag no Laurel, no arrow. Well, no, there, there was there was one point. Oh god. No, they kept saying, like, what would Laurel do? And they kept saying it so much that I expected her force ghost to just show up and tell everybody what to do. Yeah, I did. They keep on referencing her to the point where I think that might actually happen. We might get some additional Laurel flashbacks in the future. I don't know how they're going to, because we, we talked about it. We didn't actually talk about act it actually happening, but we talked about the news that she was going to be on Flash as uh, the Earth 2, 5, 3, whatever character. So there is that still available, so she could physically come onto the set of arrow through that but also with flashbacks you could do that and tommy too i mean come on let's let's Who? get some tommy uh, back nobody remembers him anymore yeah well there's something that happens we, we'll, we'll talk about that near the end of the show okay in our news yeah are we ready for the easter eggs now chris i believe we are okay you take the stick sir hey guys we got all the same regular stuff to start out with news 52 coast city all the same kind of stuff you expect across the Flareoverse. It's nice to see it. Yeah, I, I think we've seen News 52 and the rest of, of the regulars in Coast City uh, just about every episode now. But there was a new one. Michelle, do you want to you take the new one this week? Yeah, the slab. That was where are they oh, taking the idol. They're taking it to the slab. The slab. What's the slab? It's a metahuman supermax prison. Oh, so it's like the raft and the Marvel side of things. So something that should have been used for, say, Slade Wilson. Yes. 
Well, okay. no, but he's not really a meta anymore, right? Because at the end of it, he was depowered down. He'd gotten the Miracure Cure. Now he's just a badass, grumpy assassin. And we got to stop talking about Slade Wilson. It's going to make me sad because we're never going to see him again. Never. Never, ever, ever. ever. Not after Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And that's it for the Easter eggs this episode? Pretty much. All that's right. It. In the so news, that, that's the whole question about like how did he, how did how did how did Dark get the idol then? Um, <laughs> that's season five. Neil McDonough can come back the, in a cameo. That would be awesome. I you got, I like seeing the guy on screen. We just knew we weren't going to get another whole season out of him. I just like remember when he first saw the Flash. Remember he was. <laughs> remember well, we don't know whether that's was? true or not. Barry kind of screwed up the time frame timelines. Well, right. But I mean, on just the way how he reacted is all yeah. I was talking about. All right. Well, I just meant that we won't see him again because now the timelines are screwed up. It's the ultimate retcon you could potentially pull off next season. I haven't seen the flash. I have no idea what you're talking about. I won't say any more than good. Well, it was a light news week. I mean, everybody was gearing up towards the finale. There was a there's a lot of reaction out there. Not all of it's positive, by the way, but there were some articles that we ran into, including Stephen Amell wants to see certain things in season five, right, Michelle? Yes, he tells Entertainment Weekly um, that he wants the show to get back to focusing more on some of the core elements that used to define Arrow. To him, that's hand-to-hand -hand combat, no superpowers, and dealing with the job of cleaning up Star City. So he wants what Neil wants. Preach Can we it. get some? Go ahead, Chris. I just said preach it. Okay, that's all I had <laughs> to say. <laughs> can we can we get some salmon ladder? be awesome we haven't seen one of those in a while oh. yeah there you go michelle <laughs> do you need a moment now she'll be in her bunk <sighs> okay yeah <laughs> i know it's been too far it's been too long since i've seen that <sighs> that's what i'm saying we need to see it again i'm in sure the there's animated gifts out there of it in the meantime if i if, if i get the salmon ladder back you guys can have all the boob windows i'm good with that in the meantime Stephen Amell addresses the Chris. You take this because you've seen the Flash finale. I have to pull up my page. Yes, yeah, Stephen Amell was addressing whether the Flash finale is going to affect Arrow season five. So I'm not going to say much other than the fact that the end of Flash has some time travel repercussions because Flash likes to play with time travel. So Stephen Amell said Arrow is at its best. What we're dealing with, wow, I can't talk. Stephen Amell said Arrow is at its best. When we're dealing with problems in Star City, we're not a time travel show. We're not a multi Earth show, though obviously we do that with crossovers and stuff like that. Or Arrow, we deal with Star City, and I feel like we're better off focusing on that. So they're going to keep the focus there. The real question is whether the consequences coming out of a Flash have ramifications across the Flareoverse. And if mm -hmm. so, that's how you could bring in the Legends of Tomorrow if they've screwed up time. If they have. Yeah, and this could be interesting. You also had another story about pretty much the same thing in there. What does that Flash twist mean for season three of Flash? Yeah, one of the things we've been talking about, we've talked about, you know, like when Arrow and Co. get in trouble, why don't they just call the Flash? So we have discussed how the shows interact and the Barry, he, you know, like we keep saying, we don't want, but he does blow up the time and and it is one of those things. It's like, what are they going to do? You know, it, I don't want to spoil it too much, but are they going to do crisis? Are they just going to take this chance to just clean up everything? I mean, like, because what Barry does at the end of this season on The Flash should have repercussions everywhere because it changes his path and the way he was introduced on arrow could possibly not happen so it, it's like it it blows up it could actually erase the first season of legends of tomorrow it could erase a couple of seasons of arrow what he does um so it's it's what are they going to do or as they say in the article that I think you were talking about, 
if they start the flash season a couple weeks before the arrow season, everything could go back to, to normal by the time the arrow season starts again. So they could, they could get around it that way. It'll be interesting to see. We'll see how they start off the fall. We'll see what kind of lead in they have towards the fall as well. If we're going to get some sort of web series, are we going to get a comic or well, I no idea at this point in time. In the meantime, talk to you about comics, Neil, you got some toy and comic book news. We do. So this week, those crazy folks over at Pop Funko finally announced it. It's official. Green Arrow, two versions of Speedy, and the Zoom Funkos are going to be hitting the store shelves, or Amazon for most of us probably, in July of this year. And again, two versions of Thea are coming out, one with a bow and one with a sword, because, you know, that is a non-lethal superhero weapon that we've talked about in the past. She <laughs> should be running around with the sword. So that is awesome. We've got the link in the show notes, but it's all over the interwebs. Definitely check it out. They look great. So my son came home last weekend in between school and shipping out, literally shipping out. And he took a look at my Pop Funkos and he's like, that's freaky. They don't have any mouths. That's what I say, man. It freaks me out. <laughs> exactly. And I said, Chris says the same thing. So you're not wrong. But it surprised me that he was able to pick it up like within 15 seconds. of That's, being that's why most of the ones I have either have full face masks or facial hair, which kind of approximate a mouth or they're just too cool. So that has to be had. But the no mouth thing weirds me out. I, I kind of want to take a Sharpie on some of them and put a mouth on there. And the one that blows me away the most is I have the Batman Beyond one. It has a mouth. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> Just to throw you I off. Actually, I don't really get the whole Pop Funko thing to begin with. But if you guys are excited about it, yay. Oh, the Zoom one's <laughs> awesome looking. I want one. <laughs> the Zoom one is pretty awesome. There's a few that I need, but I've been limiting my co collection. Talking about collecting, Neil, I'm guessing you're collecting something that just came out yesterday. Rebirth! <laughs> we teased it at the beginning of the show. So we're recording this on Thursday, May 26th, Wednesday being New Comic Book Day, May 25th. Rebirth number one from DC Comics Drop, written by uh, Jeff Johns. And it is awesome. Uh, Chris, you mentioned something about bringing grown comic readers to tears. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was either pollen or dust in the air or something to that effect. But if you have not rushed out, and it is an epic, epic extra length comic book for $2.99. It's the new price point the DC is aiming for. It's written in multiple chapters with different art styles as you progress through it with one character continuing a theme throughout. Um, no spoilers on the podcast. You really should run out and get it yourself. It changes the entire status quo and it brings, uh, it brings heart and a sense of legacy back to the dc universe and it is near perfect how many times have you read it uh about three so far maybe four i've only done one so far but it is very good and for 80 pages for 2.99 it is ridiculously awesome you get a lot of comic to read and the the mat the mix mash of artists across this book is fantastic you get a flavor of all the big names at dc it is a hell of a way for Jeff Johns to go out writing comics for a while is by doing Rebirth number one. I wasn't able to get to my comic book store for two weeks due to various things. I went and picked up everything on Tuesday and told the guys, save one for me. I'll be in on Friday. So tomorrow I'll be in picking up my stack for the weeks, which will be awesome. I'll be honest. I did not have time to go to the comic book store and I wanted to read it. So I was like, I'll buy it twice. And I bought it on Comixology nice. the night it came out and read it. And I was like, now I'll go buy one in the store. Now, isn't DC doing the link to digital now with their comics with the rebirth? Or no, they haven't done you can that yet. Buy digital copies, but it's not like Marvel where you get a digital copy with your physical copy. Okay. Yeah. Anything else, Neil? I mean, no, I think that's it. I just, I really recommend going out and grabbing a copy of Rebirth. If you've gotten out of DC because New 52 and New You kind of shook things up and they weren't your if you're a long time comic reader if they weren't your characters i think they're bringing back that link to the past now um 
not and they're not rebooting the universe. Uh, they're just adding that link. So the, it, it's well done. The first 10 pages of the book is almost like an apology for New 52, it reads as to me. Mm-hmm. Especially some of the things that the narrator slash central character in this book is saying. You can read it as like, oh, we kind of screwed up New 52 and the character explains all the things that he feels are wrong in the universe. And you're like, that's what I thought too. You're me. <laughs> Maybe Chris is part of DC and we just didn't know it. Possibly. You know who else is a DC fan? That would be our network owner, Stephen John Drew. He sent us a little note this week and and his feedback. It was an email about the episode and he said, Hey, can next season please start with the successful funding of a Kickstarter campaign to get some ADT up in the lair? I'm sure they offer a free estimate. Seriously, though, love the finale. I'd ramble with my reasons, but given the difficult season that the writers had to work with, they did a fantastic job. Could there have been some things better? Of course, but overall, enjoyed it. I really hope we get to explore Solo, Arrow, and Company a bit at the start of next year. Summary, great resolve to the year with great groundwork to get back to the classic Arrow feel pretty much how i feel yeah agreed so say we all (laughs) so say we all chris in talking about so say we all we don't have a better we don't have a battlestar galactica podcast on the network but we do have something else that starts with b don't we well we have a lot of podcasts in the network we always like the highlight one this week we're going to talk about better podcasting episode 29 or battlestar galactica better podcast i don't know episode 29 this week's entitled microphones introduction and levels during this week's show steven and sp start start to kick off their first episode of their microphone arc giving an overview of microphones setting levels and areas to consider when trying to dial in your levels in their better podcasting download the crew discusses a secret podcast meeting that apple conducted and just what it might mean for podcasters Finally, we end the show here, hearing from you in our listener feedback segment, Better Podback. That's over at gunnageeknetwork.com. You can check out that and one of the other awesome shows that make up this network. Tons of awesome shows. And if you have a geeky podcast you want to be part of our network, go to gunnageek.com slash join. I just want to thank our listeners and viewers, everybody that's downloaded the podcast, everybody that listens to us live on Spreaker, to the replay on YouTube. I want to say thanks to our editor, Chris, and I want to say thank you for being with us through another season of Arrow. We're looking forward to a great season five coming up. And we want to thank the live participants in our Blad chat. Um, Everyone, you can join in live on Thursdays at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern on Blab and search for Starling Tribune. And don't forget, after the show, we open up the fourth seat on the Blab interface so you can hang in and hang out and share your thoughts. Hey, you can watch the next live show on the Gunna Geek Network over on Geeks.Live. The next live show happens to be Better Podcasting on Friday night at 6 30 p.m ish uh, eastern 3 30 p.m ish on the pacific time and then our next true geeky show is run by chris over on atgn sunday 11 a.m eastern or 8 a.m pacific all bright and early uh don't forget we'd love it if you could rate review and subscribe to the starling tribune or any of the other podcasts on the gun and geek network even better give us a five-star review on itunes it's very helpful for us uh like us on facebook follow us on youtube excuse me subscribe to us on youtube and feel free to badger us on twitter we're everywhere you can find all of our contact information over on the gun and geek network at gun and geek network.com while you're there check out all the other great podcasts that make up the network And if you want to share your thoughts, head on over to our Facebook page, send in a tweet, or you can call us at 1-612-888-CAVE. That's 612-888-2283, and we'll probably play your message on the podcast. Guys, Michelle, this wraps up another season of Arrow. It has been so much fun hanging out, talking about our favorite geeky superhero show, at least from the DC side, Chris, <laughs> we're an SP. Um, 
Guys, and that wraps it up for another week. Any last words before we sign off and open up the Blab interface to our live listeners? At Michelle Ely. Hashtag bring back Constantine. At Stargate Pioneer. Hashtag that's not how nukes work. <laughs> At the Chris Farrell. Hashtag flip kicks forever. And I am at Neil Isn't Witty, signing off with hashtag that's a lot of fallout. Oracle, I think we're done here. This was the Starling Tribune. You can leave us feedback at gunageek.com or check out our archive at starlingtribune.com. Visit gunageek.com for more podcasts. Music by Kevin McLeod can be found at incompetech.com. This podcast is not produced or maintained by the CW, Warner Brothers Television, CTV, or DC Comics. All characters, stories, and situations are the property of Time Warner. No infringement is intended. We will see you for the next episode of CW's Arrow.